Hey everybody, Jeremy here with Bracto IT Channel. In this video, we're going to take a look at Porteous Kiosk, which is a Linux distribution that's customized to act as a kiosk, and it's a great use for an older computer that you might have sitting around. Let's get started. All right, so what we've got here is an installed version of Porteous Kiosk. And what it basically does is it boots up into either Firefox or Chrome, and you can do various things with this. It's a very locked down Linux distribution appliance, you could call it. And the great thing about it is for certain applications, if you close the browser tab, it just reopens it and it redirects you to the website URL you have specified. So let's go ahead and get out of this and we will go about installing a clean version. All right, we're in Proxmox. We're gonna come up here and we're gonna right click on PVE 7010-1 and say create VM. I'm going to make this VM number 301 and we're going to call it Porteous YouTube. The OS is going to be Porteous Kiosk. System is fine. We'll give it 40 gigs of virtual hard drive space, two CPUs and four gigs of RAM. Although that's probably overkill. And that should get us started. And we'll go ahead and start after creation. Okay, so the first thing it wants you to do is choose your network connection. Being a VM, this is going to be wired. So we'll select the ethernet option. We're gonna use DHCP. No proxy, so we just click next. Choose your web browser. I'm gonna go with Firefox. It's confirmation screen, just click next. And then we wait for it to load the installation wizard. It's downloading Firefox currently. Okay, so there are a few ways you can do the configuration. We are doing a standalone Porteous kiosk in this particular video, so we're just going to click on Launch the Kiosk Wizard. There is a Porteous kiosk server, which will allow you to save configuration files, load those on subsequent kiosks, but we're just gonna go through the base as if we're doing a single machine. So we'll click on launch the kiosk wizard. And so basically we're gonna work down this list of items. So there's no central management at the moment, so we're just gonna close this section. Firewall is enabled. We wanna be able to ping it, so we need to enable ICMP. Wake on LAN is not applicable. We could change the host name to kiosk-youtube, say OK, and I like to close these sections as I work down them. For a custom home page, we might set up youtube.com slash c slash do my YouTube home page and you can test the home page. This might take a moment to launch. And there we go. Everything is good there. And close the tab. Set that as OK. All right, so 
URL filter. If you really want to lock it down, you can do a whitelist. Uh, and it does not want the HTTP or HTTPS on the beginning. And you've got to put uh, each URL on a separate line. And we'll call that good for now. Private mode is good. Search engine will leave to Google. It does give the option of using DuckDuckGo. Manage bookmarks is disabled. Pop-up windows will open in a new tab in Firefox. We're disabling zoom controls. Leaving user agent alone. And we should be good with everything else in this section. Auto hide nav bar. Refresh web page. All right, so we can close this section here that we were working through. And we'll go on to system settings. Background wallpaper, you can change out the Porteous kiosk wallpaper to something of your preference. If you want to use a swap file, you can. ZRAM is going to be a faster option. And you could set the percentage of your hard drive or virtual hard drive uh, accordingly. Removable device support, time zone. We'll go ahead and set this. For me, it's going to be Detroit. And it's got other options here that we won't use at this point. Uh, except I do like to use the large cursor because you don't know if you're going to get people with limited vision using the system and sometimes they prefer a large cursor. Uh, mouse speed. 20 is the default, so we're going to take that up to 35, bump it up a little bit. There is touch screen calibration if you wish to use this with a touch screen system. Screen rotation, system, sound volume, default audio, uh, default microphone, and system volume. Session password, shutdown menu, and we're going to do everything but sleep and lock. All right. And we will go ahead and close that section. And power saving. Screen saver, we're going to leave disabled. Not really necessary with modern monitors, which have a power save setting and so we can go ahead and close that additional components UEFI we're going to enable that Citrix leave disabled additional fonts if you'd like you can do that uh, SSH service handy if you're going to remote in thing I don't like is when you type your password it displays it in clear text. So that's why I'm using a bad and easily guessable password. And that's fine. And you can enable VNC. And they do give you some information about that. And if you're using the Porteous Kiosk server, then you can have VNC tunneled through SSH. Printing support, hardware video decode, and some debugging things. And you're at the end of the wizard. And then we just click next. Gives you a setting report. You do have option to save this. So if you've got a thumb, a thumb drive to plug in, uh, you can save it that way as well without using their... Uh, Porteous kiosk server. 
next. Okay, so the Porteous kiosk is free. However, if you want automatic updates, it does require a subscription. Uh, for what I'm using it for in my day job, I am going to just plan on reinstalling it every six months and that way I'm keeping it relatively up to date. So um, that also allows me to do any configuration tweaking that I'd like to do at those intervals. So we're just going to say next and we're going to select the disk and say install system, proceed. And in a couple of moments we will have an installed system and can reboot into it. Okay, and just like that, um, it's probably going to start the installer again because it's not, there we go. Okay, so we'll see what it does here. What I really want to do is eject the disk and see if that completely. Okay, so that did in fact work. And we've got our we've got our kiosk up and running. If we try to go to google.com, it's going to block it. However, if we go to a subsequent page on my channel, it should allow it. So that is the basic install process of Porteous Kiosk. And that brings us to the end of our Porteous Kiosk install. As you can see, this is useful for certain circumstances. Uh, I will be using it in a library setting for the catalog computer. Uh, you may use it for a trade show, you know, any other place that you might want to have some sort of a kiosk setup where you want people to enter to join a mailing list or other things such as that, uh, this would be a good option because when they're done with their page and they filled in their information, they can close the browser tab and it'll reopen and be ready for the next person. So that will bring us to the end of another Practical IT video. I hope you all got something out of this. I would very much appreciate it if you take a moment to like and subscribe to the channel. And if you so feel inclined to support the channel, there is a link to buy me a coffee down in the video description. And on that note, I wish you happy computing, stay safe out there, and I will see you in the next video. Have a great day.